My name is uh, Arcangelo Wani Lemi. I am the presiding bishop of Africa Inland Church, which is um, a member church of the South Sudan Council of Churches. And therefore, I sit in the council as member of the board of trustees. I am so grateful to God for this time of campaign uh, on the whole issue of forgiveness and the power of forgiveness, which is the most important thing in our country, especially in time like this. The subject of forgiveness is a very crucial one, especially to us who are Christians, because Jesus himself is the architect of forgiveness. For the Bible says, when we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. We do not deserve to be where we are, to be even be called children of God, to be called Christians, but because of forgiveness, we now can call ourselves Christians. And so forgiveness is, is an inevitable uh, act for a Christian. It is not optional. It is a must that we forgive one another as Christ himself forgave us. And in this country, with a lot of atrocities that we have caused among ourselves, the bitterness over the years of turmoil and, and, and all that has happened in this country, it is very important for us who know God and indeed every one of us to let go the past, to let go everything that has been done to us because the teaching of Christ is that we forgive as he forgave us. And so that is very, very crucial for us to do that. And this campaign is going to help us to be able to come back to the basics as a people that God has placed in this land, South Sudan, as a family, one people, one nation. We have gone through things, but these things should not keep us apart. We should now take this time so seriously, meditate and come to a place where I will say, I forgive you. And therefore I ask you to forgive me and let us forgive ourselves. Let us forgive our parents. Let us forgive our leaders. Let us forgive our children. Let us forgive our own environment. Let's forgive our situations. Because there are some of us probably who will say the situation have been so bad. And so we hold the situations in our hearts. We hold the people in our hearts. We hold our relatives in our hearts. We hold other tribes in our hearts. We hold our leaders in our hearts. But it's high time that we release them. And that is the act of forgiveness. I don't need to be forgiven in order for me to forgive. I forgive in order for me to fulfill the requirements that God wants us to do. He taught us in his prayers that we should forgive those who trespass against us, those who have caused problems that we know against us, those who have impl inflicted pain probably in our lives, those who have done something that we can remember and we say, this is because of so and so. These are the people that we want to, we must go to and say, brother and sister, I forgive you. That is what we need, we need to do. South Sudan has come from very far and uh, the journey is yet ahead of us and for us to be able to reach where God wants us to reach, it is this path of forgiveness that we need to begin to move on. And as we forgive one another, God himself will forgive us and God will begin to bless this, our land. Personally, uh, as human being, I personally have gone through so many things. And I was just reminded with this power of forgiveness when I saw it on television, when I looked at the, uh, the, the, the flyers, and, uh, and I say, well, I really have to reflect in my own life. And I'm reminded of the people that over the years I may have held in my heart just to release them, to free them, 
that I may also be free. And now I feel completely freed from some of the small things, some of the big things that I have been going through. I was raised in Kapoita. I was born in Kapoita. I was raised in Kapoita. My parents lived there for many years. We loved the, the people. We loved the area. But one time when my father was killed, I hated Kapoita. I hated even the people. But God just touched my heart that it's not everybody. It is that one person that probably has done this act. It is that one person in his own heart of sin who decided to kill your father. And therefore, you don't need to hold everybody. So now I am free. I have friends from Kapoit. I feel good because I, I grew up there. And, and these are the people that I saw when I was still very young. And I feel connected to them. I have forgiven them. And therefore, I am free to be with them. We even have our own association of people that grew up in Kapoita and we always meet and, and talk and think of how we can also uh, chip uh, or, or, or contribute for the good of uh, the people back in Kapoita. So my people in South Sudan, I just want to tell us it is high time for us that we begin to release people that we have put in our hearts so that we can be free, so that we can be lighter and begin to think of what is so important for us to do in this country and by so doing god will even join up with us and begin to bless uh, this nation you know if you have a prison full of people you have a lot to do you have to feed them you have to control them you have to be so busy all the time about the people in prison not caring even for yourself so that's exactly when you put so much so many people in your heart you're just going to be walking with them in your heart and you will have no time to think otherwise. As a Christian, I urge us all to come to a place where we kneel down, meditate upon, upon this, uh, about this time of forgiveness and surely and honestly forgive one another. In fact, as a Christian, number one, vengeance belongs to the Lord. I don't need to think of repent, I mean, of, of, of uh, retaliating. I don't want to even think of this person to be looked for and put in prison. I want to leave it all to God. But if anything, Jesus himself said when he was hanging on that cross at Calvary, facing the pains of all those nails, the mockery and the insults, the whips that went through his back, he looked around and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. There are acts of atrocities. There are bad things that have been done. By basically, I want to believe people who do not know what they are doing. How I pray, that God in his own way will come to them and begin to transform them and the good side of them will be revealed, will be manifested and the good person in this supposedly bad person will, will be seen in action and, and he will be there helping even in the development of the nation and in transforming this country as a transformed person. I think. Uh, it is, it is a process, but it is a process that we must set pace. We, mu we must begin to walk the, that journey of forgiveness. And as a Christian, it is painful. I think it is, it is I would not say it is a process that it has to go and go and go on. You know, once you're a Christian, it's a command. For me, it is a command. I am commanded to forgive whoever has hurt me. Forgive those who trespass against you. So if you are a Christian, it is inevitable. You have, to be, you have to start your work by forgiving. It is forgiveness that begins first. And I know the pain probably will take time. 
The healing will take time. The trauma that comes with you even saying, I have allowed, I have forgiven, that takes time. But it's okay, so long you have already released this person from your heart, that process will be shorter than you expect. And so, yes, it may be a process, but a process that must be started by the act and confession of forgiveness immediately as a child of God. Given the time line from the time my father was killed up to now, my growth and my, my maturity in the things of God, I would even love to sit with this person and talk to him and embrace him as my brother, knowing that yes, this has happened, but I would want to speak to him, to tell him that I have forgiven you, and I would want you to allow yourself be forgiven by God, by accepting the Lord Jesus in your life. It is difficult, it is painful, but I think it has taken time from the time my father was killed and that was 19, um, it was 1991 when I got the information. It was so painful. But now, I think if the person comes, I will embrace him. My hands will be so widely open to receive him and to tell him, my friend, you, are my, my, you, you killed my father, but I want to embrace you and to tell you that I have forgiven you. And not only that, I have prayed for you and I believe God has forgiven you. I think this is a, a very huge reminder to all of us that uh, we must begin to do things in a different way. And therefore, I would really want to urge the people of South Sudan, irrespective of all the hurts and the difficulties and the pain, the agony that you have gone through, let us begin to take this campaign to come to a place where we begin to start a new journey by forgiving one another. We have been injured. We have injured ourselves. By the way, in our actions, you may not have killed somebody, but you may have spoken words. And these words are so lethal. The Bible says that you, if you speak something evil or bad against your brother, you have also killed him. We have killed ourselves by speaking evil words the narrative of war that we have talked, the bad messages that we have sent to one another, even as we lament. This we have caused atrocities. Even the lack of saying probably good things to one another. Over the years, we have ceased to even appreciate one another, to say good things about some of these few things that we have, we have seen. The very fact that you are alive today, do you care saying thank you to somebody? Thank you to God, thank you to your sister, thank you to your government, thank you to your brothers and sisters wherever they are, thank you to the church for praying, thank you to your pastor, thank you. We don't say this because we are inundated and overwhelmed by the pain. So I think uh, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I want to beseech this opportunity to tell you, let us seize the moment and let us begin to do things in a very different way and the different way is that let us begin to walk this path of forgiveness because South Sudan has never known forgiveness we have always been fighting we have always been insulting we have always been doing the things that are so militant with one another this probably is a new road map for us to be a people that will be so distinguished and a people that will later on run this country of ours. Three stories that can change your life. Real stories of real people who have gone through the most difficult circumstances in their lives, but they have experienced the power to forgive. 
gisas hagigia bagger gero hayataki gisa tanas hagigin umon mururu fi zuruf sab o hawadis tahaya lakini umon wedi shuhuda le gua tamusamaha If you'd like to get a free copy of the book and audio device, Power to Forgive, you can call this toll-free number, 2222. Call now and get your free copy. Can you tell me about the book that you have to go to Musamaha? It's about the double telephone for you. It's not your name, 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 it's not your name,